Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, welcome to another video of the Cinematography Lab. Ruben Arce here. And today I'm going to talk about remote controls for the 4000ZM Mark II. In my case, it works for as well with the original one, and I'm pretty much sure that it wouldn't be the same with um, other models of the camera or Mark IV, for example, we can say. Um, I'm going to make a remote control which is extremely simple I and mean, I'm going to try to make it a short video to keep it short but I'm going to explain uh, there are a couple of ways to trigger the the camera with a remote control and one way to do it is using one of these things this is a um, release cable for cameras originally used on 35 millimeters cameras there are several cameras that can take this connection but in my experience with cameras like the Krasnogorsk k3 you can use this one but uh, it's a heavy trigger heavy button and it doesn't exactly work uh, as intended I'm going to try to use it I have actually haven't tried this so bear with me but but I tried with another camera and it wasn't I didn't get the results that I was expecting um, so pretty much what I have to do with the ball loop is I have to remove that thing all the way back and then I as you can see it's not working <laughs> and that's exactly what happened the first time I tried to use it but if I push the button you can see the camera working I, I attached the, the release cable but it doesn't trigger the camera I mean it was intended to be that used that way but I read somewhere probably James uh, mentioned this that you need a special release cable for this camera and I don't have that special release cable and I don't like things that you cannot trust um, I don't like things that are not standard or that work most of the time these by the way you see this thing it's extremely uncomfortable <laughs> on my finger now there's another way to to use the camera and that would be uh, using a an electrical connection and that it's actually very simple what I'm going to do is again I'm going to put this uh, switch on that permanent position and you know when this one is there as, I, as soon as I push the button the camera runs right so I don't have the original volume control but I have a cable here and this was this came out of a well I have a bunch of them they were used on flashes all still photography flashes and this pretty much what it is is a 2.5 millimeter um, jack or mini plug connector and it only has two uh, ends it's not a stereo one what we call stereo in the sound world it only has two connections and what you do with this one it's you remove this thing careful with that and you plug it in in there and as you can see there is a an open circuit meaning the two cables are not touching each other so when I push the button nothing happens I'm gonna push it and I'm gonna lock it and the reason for me to do this is because I want to professionalize these cameras I want to make changes to these cameras and many other cameras that I have been working on for years to make them um, easier to work with in professional environments so that's my reason to be to want something reliable 
and to, to have something that I can extend. This thing, even if it works, I cannot extend this uh, 10 feet, for example. But this one I can. Now, this is an open circuit. <laughs> you see that? As soon as I close the circuit with anything, really, even uh, touching those cables, uh, the camera is gonna work. That's all it takes. Uh, the only thing you have to do is this. As soon as you you close that circuit, uh, the camera is gonna run. And then something's gonna happen when you um, open the circuit again. The camera is gonna stop, and sometimes, many times, the mirror shutter. It's not gonna be in position, meaning the, the viewfinder is gonna be dark, and that it's extremely easy to solve. Uh, I just unlock the the trigger, the release trigger, and listen to that. Pay attention to when I'm going to remove this thing, and you're gonna see what happens. That was this the mirror going back to its original position and you can see through the viewfinder uh, I, you can connect this thing plug it plug it in back into the camera and get ready for another shot as you can now see through the viewfinder so as you can see it's not ideal it's a super 8 camera guys it's one of the best super 8 cameras in my opinion but it was not intended to be a professional camera mounted on cranes on steady cams and all those things that I'm gonna be doing soon so even when it's not perfect if I have to do this after every shot uh, I'll do it I don't mind doing that especially that it's not gonna be every single time it's gonna be when I'm mounting the camera on a crane or on a stabilizer or something like that and the other thing that I'm going to use is this and this is a switch momentarily switch and I learned a lesson I'm not a an electronics guy and but I understand a few things uh, about electronics and I learned something new and that is that this switch is always on the on position and only when I push the button it stops uh, the, the the flow of electricity and as you can see that's not ideal for this camera let's try it with with these and okay I, I plug it in and then as soon as I plug it in the, the camera is not responding when I do that it's waiting for this thing to to work so I'm gonna use this uh, alligator clips to connect those things to this one and you're gonna see that if I use this um, switch momentary switch the camera starts running right away and then I push the button and the camera stops So that's um, not the ideal situation, right? <laughs> that's not something you want to do. And uh, what I said that I learned is I needed a switch that is going to do the opposite. And of course, uh, they exist. I purchased like purchased like 10 of these switches that I cannot use, at least not for this project anymore. And if you're watching these, uh, please subscribe and then like the videos because I'm using my own money to be honest <laughs> doing this kind of stuff and uh, ordering stuff and waiting for it to arrive and all those things so I get this one and as you can see it looks different this is black and I don't know if that's a standard but this one the black one it's a the same thing, exactly the same thing, but the difference is this one will work 
in the opposite way which obviously is going to solve the problem right should solve the problem and that means this switch it's um, keeping an open circuit until the moment I push the button and as you imagine can imagine that is exactly what we want right so as I said before it is a extremely extremely simple uh, project not doing anything complicated here uh, so the only thing I have to do to finish this project is solder these wires here and it should be ready right in my case I talked about this before I can uh, I have a 3d printer I can design my own stuff so I designed this thing and it's gonna be something that I can have a grip on it and it has a cap and it has a hole for the wire the cable to go through and then <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna put that thing there the, the switch is gonna be here and I can grab it like this and push it right um, this is not a tutorial these are my ideas and you can use that information uh, to create your own stuff if you want uh, if you don't have a 3d printer I have something here and this is a canister for 35 millimeters rolls for example you can use one of these ones you can uh, grab a screwdriver heat it up uh, on the stove and then uh, make a hole here you can drill it and you could use something like this you can even make it a hole on the other end for the wire like this is pretty much the same concept as my design I have a body and I have a cap and you could use this thing as a remote. Looks pretty nice and it's uh, isolated. So I don't have the wires just like the way they were before. Uh, I have a grip, something to grab, and it works works much nicer. So, again, let's do it. Um, we connect the remote now. It is a remote. We have to lock the camera in the run position. and it simply works you don't need this thing as I said before you can use a container like something like this and drill a couple of holes and that would be it now I wanted to uh, mention this thing because I said uh, when you use the remote control I already mentioned this but I have to explain it again um, you run the camera and the mirror shutter is not going to be always it's not always going to end up in the in its uh, original position where it reflects the image back so you can see through the viewfinder uh, if that's not the case you don't actually need to unplug the the remote every single time actually not a good idea because you're gonna wear that part but if I unlock the camera I already run the camera you saw that if I unlock the trigger and I push this one pay attention listen it releases the mirror and it goes back to its original position I'm gonna do it again I'm gonna hold it there I could well, I'm gonna lock it so you can see it working I run the camera take the shot that I want to shake to take um, and then I wanna move to something else I released the trigger and if the mirror is not in on, on its reflecting position I don't even have to unplug the wire the connector the jack I just push the button and the mirror it's in back to its original position 
So there is pretty quick, pretty simple. If you want to do something like this, you can you can extend this thing. Who knows? You do your own uh, test. If you wanna, but I'm I'm pretty much sure you can go up to ten foot without any problems. Thank you for watching, guys. Uh, please subscribe, like it, so I can keep doing some more videos.